Hey. <laughs> um, my name's Eho. So I'm Ben. Um, I'm Meg. Hi Lewis, thanks for um, joining me. So in this series we're doing some of the unspoken truths about lockdown. Um, okay, so one thing that's definitely come up quite a lot is like people's housing situation. So where they are for lockdown, how that's kind of played out, how much choice they've got over where they are. Mm -hmm. And obviously that's one that's very much, I think, well, it's more dictated by age because obviously, you know, I, as an adult, get to kind of choose where I want to live and where I'm going to be for lockdown to a certain extent. But like my kids don't. <laughs> yeah. Um, in my own personal experience, I've been like kind of semi-fortunate because I have my family home in London and then I have my flat here in Bristol. Um, and just at the beginning, I was with my family, but then I was worried that lockdown was going to get stricter and the restrictions were going to get worse. And I was like, no, I can't do this. I need to leave <laughs> because once you've kind of stepped away from home for quite a bit like I haven't lived in my family home prop like for a prolonged time for quite a while then to kind of go back into that bubble and you're like hmm I'm definitely like a grown-up but I'm also like a child right now and it's like a really weird kind of medium because obviously when you move away and you have limited contact with your family you can sort of choose which parts of your life you share with them like you don't lie but you just don't share absolutely everything but when you're all squished together it's really hard to not end up sharing everything yeah so it's i mean this is something that i'm really interested in particularly for people sort of under the age of 18 in particular because it's that thing that you might be a very different person out in the world than you are to your family and and even yeah. if you even if you don't have any obvious like identity kind of things going on we do all behave differently with our families than we do yeah we like your own. mates <laughs> yeah. so, so yeah like you said we do have that sometimes it's not even like a proper like strict difference like this is who I am with my friends this is who I am with my family but there are like certain nuances that your friends know about that your family may not know about it's like two sides of the same coin so I feel like sometimes when you kind of lose that other side it's a bit like oh am I still me is it like a whole like you're missing a part of who you are coming home and having to have your home personality the whole time is a real struggle. Yeah, I know that we've seen that in our work because obviously we do a lot of stuff with, um, well, two of our projects with LGBTQ plus and also from like Bain backwards and stuff. And if people are, if people are still in that process of working out their identity or have an identity that's quite different outside the home than it is inside the home, then that causes quite a lot of problems really. I think it definitely puts a strain on for a lot of people especially people yeah like you were saying who haven't necessarily come out yet to their families or people who i don't know live in a religious household and don't necessarily share all the same beliefs mm. it can be quite difficult because i work with like young lgbtq plus youth some of the home environments are not very nice home environments they're hostile environments where they're not able to really express their identity. Some of them still aren't out yet. So there's definitely a lot of fear and worry around that. I know a couple of people have been talking about having to share space at home mm. and not necessarily having a lot of that. Really having, you know, lots of family members around, pretty tight, small spaces, um, you know, around the clock 24 seven, uh, you know, for the, for the entirety of lockdown. So the idea of privacy um, and, you know, some alone time for, for whatever reason, whether that's just to disconnect from, you know, just life in general and just have mm -hmm. some you know, time to escape or whether that's to access, you know, some of the therapeutic services that Off The Record and Zazi offers, you know, that opportunity to access um, privacy is, is, is a big one um, when it comes to you know, some of the young people that we're working with, the idea of being able to just access therapy um, and just have it just known and everyone cool with it is something that isn't necessarily transferable to, you know, the, the communities that Zazi works in. For a lot of people, their access to therapy is something that they keep very private because mental health itself is stigmatized and it's kind of demonized and it's kind of looked down upon, you know, talking about mental health any capacity, whether something as simple as, oh, being quite
let down today or I think I'm a little bit, you know, anxious. Those things sometimes are completely kind of discarded. So the idea of just being able to say, yeah, I'm just going to chat to my therapist today in a house that's already really crammed. And, it's packed, you know, yeah. Yeah, it's just, it, it's an impact on, you know, the, the way in which the young people are living during this time uh, i know quite a lot of young people have to share rooms with their siblings um so to have that energy around you all the time so it's not even like you can get away to your room because your room is somebody else's room as well and it's just a lot of different energies going around the household and um, yeah i share a single room with my sister in a tiny house with two enormous dogs like there's not enough space to breathe like it would be different if we could kind of break out and kind of take a break from each other but when you're all just kind of enclosed in one space and then you want to have your own space but that space is sharing it can yeah it would be really hard yeah it's kind of like it's a psychological space and it's the physical space mm. as well isn't it was there like a period of sort of adjustment when you were all back in the kind of home sort of in this period was it like did you have to go through sort of a period where you worked out how to make it work almost uh, yeah, I think there were issues with space, um, but now we've sort of got to the point where it's okay to say, can you go out of our room for a bit because I really need to breathe. It's, uh, it's kind of, it takes up a big like part of your mind, I suppose, when someone else is in the room, you can't, you might not be able to fully relax or um, you kind of have to think about their needs as well. Um, for attention or space as well so if you might um, be wanting to see them and they don't want to and that can create tension. Um, I was thinking about this and particularly about the idea of space because lots of the stuff that's being put out about well-being and about like looking after your mental health do you ever get the feeling that a lot of those ideas are kind of built very much from a place of privilege in that lots of those well-being kind of suggestions are only really possible if you have certain things in place um, I don't know, what do you think? Yeah. yeah, I think it's, most of it is, um, and I say most, you know, there's obviously, I would say over the last couple of years, we've started to have more kind of neutral uh, dialogue around mental health in terms of, you know, acknowledging that not everyone's experience is the same, but I think by and large, there is a lot of uh, assumptions about dealing with mental health that does come from a, a place of privilege you know mm. something you know simple kind of what i said earlier on was like just talk about it you know let your feelings out you know for a lot of you know young people young brain people in the community that is just like just totally not something that they can even consider themselves doing because like i said before it's stigmatized it's heavily stigmatized mm. um but that's the more extreme end of the case right but i think some of the general stuff you know like self-care or uh you know taking time for yourself and, and taking time to look after yourself and taking time to have time by yourself these are all things that are privileges you know for a lot of, of, of people to have that space or mm. have that time to engage in a self-care routine when you know some of the people we're working with again are not only managing themselves as a young person some, some of them are managing themselves as carers some of them are managing themselves as students some of them are managing themselves as all three so yeah, that, it's lots of different at, identities. Exactly. And to, to be able to just disconnect and, and, and you know, engage in some self-care is difficult. Hi. 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 Cool. Uh.